Hi, I'm John Krasuz, Chief of Sleep Law Volunteer Fire Department. And today, this is our, we just wanted to show you our firefighter bailout system training center. And what this is, is just to teach firefighters how to get out of a room in the event that they get trapped by a flash or over in a room. And we've trained over the and now we build our own. So we have our own simulator here. It's very cost effective. Training is done on our time, so it's convenient for our members. We're not to worry about the class being overbooked. And with the support of the Village Board, we're able to construct this behind the firehouse so we can use it at any time. I just want to welcome everyone to the uh, Sleep Valley Fire Department bailout simulator. Um, we have a few guests tonight. We're going to give you a few demonstrations. We'll explain what it is and how it works. Most people don't know, but a lot of firefighters get trapped inside a uh, burning room. They go into a room to do search and rescue, and they can't get out. So what was designed was called the bailout system. Essentially what it is is, Chris, can you come over here a minute? Sure. <laughs> Essentially what it is, it's just basically a hook with a rope. Now Chris is going to show you our hook. This is a galvanized steel hook. We can hook this to anything inside, a radiator. Uh, we could hook it to a wall. Can you get that side? Essentially what happens is this ties off. So if a guy's up where Jerry is, and we'll show you in a minute, he'll be able to jump out of the window and come down the window without hitting the pavement come down on a controlled slide using his rope and his bag. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to thank the board for being supportive for letting us build this and build this behind the <laughs> behind the wall actually. And our newest assistant chief Patrick Haggerty and Chris Skelza. This right here is called the belay line. If you look on the ground, the end of the rope is bolted into the ground. This is for training only. If something goes wrong, He's not going anywhere. So during training, we're not going to get hurt. Uh, obviously, the fire, we don't have this. That's why we train, so we won't have to rely on this. You guys ready? ready All right, let's step out. Here's the top line. On belay orange. On belay orange. Here we go. Smooth. Feel, 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 no. Ladder, ladder. Punch out. Punch out. Heard him say no hook, that means he's not tied off. He's in a leg lock so he doesn't fall. So if his hook does come loose, he'll still be able to hang on. Five o'clock, five o'clock. Stand by, stand by. Five o'clock, leg lock. Five o'clock, five o'clock. Five o'clock, you ready? Ready. How's the hook feel? Feel good. Lock. There he comes out the hook. Hands off. And as you notice, the right. rubble obviously has not fallen. And you can see the hook going into the window. It's really the only thing holding him up. The orange line is non-existent at this point. All of his weight is held on that one little piece of rope. It goes to 50 feet. So as long as we're within 50 feet, we're good. Even if it's 60, that's 50 feet less we have to fall or drop in the event that we do get hung up. All right, Marco, come on down. What he's going to do, he's going to come down Three on o'clock. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Three nice o'clock. Three o'clock. You notice his left hand is controlling his descent and the right is holding the rope. Three o'clock. All the way to the ground. Nice job, Mark. Down. Mm -hmm. no doing right now? They're checking his harness. They're checking his bag to make sure everything's in place. The lowest part of this window sill. Every time he goes up, degrees. he gets checked. As you go up, you're about 350. Halfway up, about 600 degrees. Okay. But if we could stand up in this window, we don't need to use our device. Somebody could come here with a ladder. A ladder truck could come here. This system will be used as a last resort. Again, about 200, 350, 600, 1,000 and above. So that's why everybody's staying low, they're pushing, they're cupping, they're punching out, and out the window you go. Our past Chief Willie Hennessy, who just got out with the rifle at the age of 62, was coming out the window, completed all of his jumps and mandated 12 jumps. Every year we have to have X amount of jumps to train. If you don't have the training, you're disqualified from the bag until you reach your limitation. Everything is documented in our computer system, so no one can say, hey, I went. And we, know, we know you did. This also counts as OSHA training. We have a mandate 10 hours to do every year. This also counts as part of it. You don't have to go to Valhalla. You don't have to go to Valhalla anymore. We can do it right here. It saves us time. The labor was cheap. The, the material we got, it's state bid cost. Right, Mr. Administrator? Uh, so it was fairly cheap. And one of the firefighters' dad did it. It was a master carpenter, and he gave us a really good price. So uh, for us, it's great because, like I said, we can't always get people 
to the training center. They can come any night. We're at Patrick, Jerry, Marco, Chris can do their jumps. And there's no excuse for anyone in the fire department not to make their qualifications. Triple A emergency supply and be refitted and trained, stretched, you know, tested for. Is there a difference between um, a training bag and a yeah. training fire bag, bag or whatever? Training oh. bag is only good for 30 jumps. They recommend with your bag that you, that you do three jumps a year on your own bag. And once you use your bag and, and a rescue, you're guaranteed to get a free bag for the manufacturer. But he's looking forward to getting the gear into the bag. Three stories? Yeah, it's actually, they call it five, but three you're comfortable, four you're like, uh oh. Five you're like, all right, this is going to hurt when I get to the last 10 or 15. Yeah. But you know, we're, if you see us using it in the fire scene, that means we're in big trouble. Yeah. You know, we're emphasizing and on recognizing the dangers of flashovers and backdrafts, which most guys do. But sometimes you're busy inside a fire and things just happen. Marco's going to come out of the window blindfolded because in a fire, you can't see two feet in front of you. So part of our training is he has to feel around where to hook up to, find a secure item to tie off, and then come out <coughs> totally blacked out. All right, we're up on top of our bailout system. Uh, as you can see, Marco's going to go blind again. And this is pretty much how he repairs upstairs. That's our Nomex hood we usually use. It's spun around so you can see out of it. It's to protect us during a fire. It's made Nomex that keeps the heat off here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, uh, it really has no vision right now. And most of the stuff we do, like I said before, is all in the dark anyway. So he's got to learn to get dressed. He's got to learn to hook on. On belay orange. On belay orange. What we're going to do is we're going to give you the bird's eye view. we show you where he hooks into and how it looks and you can get a view looking down. Take your time, take your time here at the window. The window, Marco, blind with a pack. Jerry's giving instructions. Here we go. On blay arm. On blay arm. Marco's looking for a window. Go for a ladder, for a ladder. He's feeling around. Okay, we're safe. We're at the window. Right hand, grab his hook. We're at the window. Place him to the left. He's going to look, feel for a place. Not even look as you can't see. He's going to feel for a place to hook in. You see, you look at the bottom of the window. Punch out, punch out. Punch out. Five o'clock, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Left leg locked. Left leg locked. Yeah, lock. You punched out at five o'clock? Punch five o'clock. How's the how's the hook feel? Good, good. All right, fly. There's his leg lock. Now Jerry just sent him out. Okay, hands off, hands off. Hands off. I'm blind. Jerry told him to take off his mask. As you can see, Marco's being held. He's not being held by the safety line. Once he's down below this window sill, no matter what's going on, it's blowing out the sides, the top. You see. Once he's down, he can hang there. 10 minutes, if need be. If he can't get his device activated and to get down, we can come and get him. When they first started doing these, guys were thinking it was Spider-Man. They would hook and just want to jump out. The instructors finally told them, listen, you just have to get outside the window. That's all you have to do. The fire's not on the outside. Just get outside of the heat. Sit there if you have to. Just get out, you know, as quick as possible. Let's go. Nice and easy. Feel with feet, 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 window, window. There you go. Nice job. Nice the other way around, all the way around. We built this window here. As you can see what just happened. When you come out of another window, there may be a window here. Uh, at some point, we'll put a junk air conditioner we find out here. So the guys will learn when they come down, you got to feel with your feet, move to the left, right, or move out and around it. Essentially what a fast team does, and we have one. If Terrytown has a fire, they'll call us for a fast team. It's usually five or six people. And all we do is stand by the door. If a firefighter goes inside, we stand by the door. And a fast team's job is if they get trapped and call for a mayday. This way, everyone doesn't go running in, just the fast team. So it's really rescuing the firefighters. So we put this window here. We're going to actually simulate guys at some point coming in and out of this window, crawling in, taking a guy out who's knocked out. It's going to be pushing you out. I mean, literally, if you've been, if you're sitting next to a campfire and gotten, you know, gotten your legs get hot, that's the whole room feels like that. It's going to be pushing you out, putting pressure on you. You're going to have, you're going to want to get out, and this will save our lives. All set, ready to go. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. All right, brother. There we go. Nice and easy down. Feel with your toes. Feel with your toes. Window, window, window. Feel with your toes. Straight down. Nice job. Test feet. Test feet. All the way. All the way nice around. job. Uh, we've just showed you the bailout simulator. It was constructed by uh, Chris Skelza's father, Glenn Skelza. He's a master carpenter. We also had guys in the fire department helping him. So this is really cost effective. Uh, not only is it cost effective, it's training ourselves to save ourselves, which is the number one priority.
can see, we take our uh, training very serious. And this is why we put it here. To better save our lives so we can protect you another day. This is John Krasich, Chief of the Fire Department, signing off and saying be safe. Yeah.